So good afternoon and welcome everyone to the second uh, online seminar of uh, uh, Future EOAQUA. Uh, my name is Emanuele Busacca from IFAM uh, Organics Europe uh, and today I, I will be the uh, moderator uh, of the session. Uh, some technical uh, uh, issues, so please mute uh, your microphone and uh, at the end of the presentation, uh, you will have time for asking questions. Uh, you can do either by raising your hands uh, in the reaction uh, icon, or you can put your question also on the uh, chat box. Uh, so Futuria Aqua is an Horizon 2020 project with 32 partners. Uh, it was kicked off in November 2018 and it will end uh, this year uh, in April. The aim uh, of the project is to promote the sustainable growth of climate change resilient, uh, environmental friendly, organic and conventional aquaculture in Europe and is to meet future challenges with the respect of growing consumer demand for high quality nutrition and responsibly produced food. Uh, today is the second session uh, of our series of seminar. And today's topic is a sustainable and resilient feed and feed straight strategy. So how can we improve feed to uh, ensure uh, optimal fish nutrition, safety and performance? And uh, it will be presented by Professor Elena Mente from the uh, Aristotle University of uh, Thessaloniki, uh, Greece. Uh, so I will give immediately the word to Elena and uh, I will also share the presentation for her. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Emmanuel, for the invitation. It uh, was a pleasure to contribute. I'll stop my video now. The webinar will uh, demonstrate sustainable and resilient nutritional solutions aimed at the highest possible fish performance in the framework of a safe and sustainable aquaculture. It will cover innovative species specific nutritionally adequate tailor made low ecological footprint fish diets and their nutritional impact on farmed fish growth performance, health and quality for a better performing sustainable and organic aquaculture. The webinar builds on the basic knowledge of fish biology, physiology and biochemistry. Is organized into two parts, two sessions. The first part will focus on fish nutrition in aquaculture, and the second part on innovative fish feeds for healthy fish for a healthy human consumption. At the completion of this webinar, you will be able to understand the role of nutritional research in sustainable and organic aquaculture, and also the relationship between innovative fish feeds and nutrition for the production of a healthy fish. An introduction with some key concepts and the knowledge gaps will follow. And then part A from the webinar will uh, discuss basic issues in fish nutrition, essential nutrients, fish species life stages, specific nutritional requirements, fish while the second part will concentrate on feed ingredients, raw material quality, diet formulation, feed efficiency, feeding management, and novel sustainable fish feeds. Feeding the future farmed fish by formulating sustainable ecological feeds and providing the dietary essential nutrients to meet the species life stage specific nutritional requirements to promote optical, optimal sorry, growth and health is the aim of this research. Understanding the dietary supply line of essential nutrients in relation to their bioavailability to obtain the best feeding strategy for farmed fish is also another objective. Key concepts is a critical thinking in nutrition and the knowledge of this nutrition and the evaluation of the formulation of ecological tailor-made species, life stage specific fish diets. 
Aquaculture is the farming of fish. We will focus here for fish farming only, and we, we are going to involve farmed freshwater and saltwater populations that they are reared in control conditions up and also in ponds and the cages. The recirculated aquaculture system is a closed system that allows full control of production, reusal of water, and therefore needs also water treatment units to remove accumulated waste. Organic aquaculture is an overall system of farm management and food production that combines best environmental practices, a high level of biodiversity, the preservation of natural resources, the application of high animal welfare standards, and a production method in line with the preference of certain consumers for products produced using natural substances and processes. As a general principle in nutrition of farmed aquatic animals, Feeds should meet all nutritional requirements of the organisms and promote animals' well-being, health, and growth, ensure high quality of the final product, and have low environmental impact. Nutrition is the provision of all indispensable nutrients in adequate amounts to ensure proper growth and maintenance of body functions. It involves various chemical reactions and physiological transformations which convert feed into body tissues and activities. Involves ingestion, digestion and absorption of various nutrients, transport them into cells and removal of unusable elements and waste products of metabolism. Nutrients are chemical compounds in feed that are used by the animal organism to meet its physiological function, to grow and maintain its health. Essential nutrients, they are provided in the diet in order to ensure adequate growth and maintenance. The categories of the nutrients could be macro and micro, like protein, lipids, carbohydrates, trace metals, vitamins, amino acids, fatty acids, and the amount of fish, specific nutrient that fish needs to sustain all its physiological functions for growth and reproduction while maintain a healthy life is the nutrient requirement. So our aim is to find essential nutrients from feeds for humans. We all know that world population is expected to increase 9 billion by 2050, thus there's an increased food production to meet this global population rise. So there's an increased demand for animal and seafood products, an increased demand for sources of protein and omega-3 fatty acids. Animal protein has increased the past decades, and food fees from aquaculture has gone from 0.7 to 7.8 kilos in the past four years due to the stagnation of the captured fisheries and the increase in market demand. So why fees? We all know that we have heard or we have heard that fees is nature's superfood or it is very close. There is a considerable scientific evidence for the health benefits of omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids, and in particular EPA and DHA, against coronary heart disease, stroke, and diabetes in humans. There is an urgent need to increase public awareness and understanding concerning the nutritional merits and health benefits of increased consumption of fish and seafood products. The inclusion of fish and aquatic foods as an essential component of a healthy diet, according to the National Dietary Nutrient Requirement Guidelines, is well known. In addition, there are dangers of high intakes of processed foods and fast foods on overweight, obesity, coronary heart disease, and diabetes. So we all know about the fish nutritional value. In marked contract to wild caught fish, with aquaculture, 
it is possible to improve the nutritional quality of the flesh of the cultural species and consequently enhance its potential health value. So nutritional fish composition and potential health value depends also on species and also on which part we consume, if it is a fillet, the whole fish, the head, the offal, the source, if it is wild, if it is farmed, if it is coming from recreational fishery, if it is a marine or a freshwater fish species, the country of origin and the method of production, and even the cooking method prior to consumption, and the nutrient composition of the feed that is used if it is farmed. Food fish, whether captured or cultured, plays an important role in human nutrition and global food supply and food security, and is needed as a source of much needed essential dietary nutrients. The nutrient composition of fish and seafood products has more protein, less fat, and mainly more omega-3 fatty acids, and less calories than food products as poultry, poultry turkey, or pig meat as is shown in this graph. The nutritional profile of the cultured pet fish or shrimp can be tailored to meet the needs of the consumer through the... We say we are what fish eat. We can even use or supplement omega-3 fatty acids or trace metals or vitamins, or even change their gut microbiome for better nutrient assimilation. And we have to do all this because it is well known that aquaculture is the future of food. And research has shown that back in 1968, the contribution of capture fisheries versus aquaculture to human consumption was 94% and 6% respectively. While in 2018, the contribution is changing and it was 48% and 52% percent that comes from aquaculture and by 2030 aquaculture will contribute by 59 percent and fisheries only by 41 percent to human consumption so this means that around 109 metric tons of aquaculture will provide fish for human consumption and that implies that around 40 metric tons of aqua feeds will be needed So there is an urgent need to find sources for aquafeeds for a sustainable aquaculture. And in particular, the essential nutrients, as we discussed before, that need to be included in the aquafeeds to meet the aquatics animal nutrient requirement. The nutrient sources come from fishing and agricultural farming activities up to now. It is well known that high quality fish meal provides a balanced amount of all essential amino acids, minerals, phospholipids, and fatty acids, acids sorry, reflected in the normal diet of fish and ensuring high utilization by the fish and minimum discharge of nutrients to the environment. By replacing fish meal and fish oil in high performing diets for fish farming, we have to take into account and we need to be able to use efficient alternative feed ingredient sources. For example, microalgae, bacterial protein, yeast, insect meal, fermented soybean meal, and in particular, those ingredient sources that can be sustainably produced with an ecological footprint and also can be assimilated by the animal. Future EU Aqua results show that the most acceptable source of ingredients for fish feed is microalgae. Insects and GMO-free vegetable proteins follow at the second place. And then we have white fish and vegetable oil as it is listed by the consumers and it is shown in this graph. Fish trimmings and bacterial proteins are right on the scale up midpoint. However, the way participants responded on the acceptability of these feed ingredients is varied between European countries. 
So future EU Aqua investigated the use of efficient alternative feed ingredient sources. As we said before, microalgae, bacterial protein, yeast, insect meal, fermented soybean meal, and in particular those sources, ingredient sources, that can be sustainably produced with an ecological footprint. Feed formulations were developed for smart, optimized, and better performing aquaculture, focusing on circular economy and safeguarding aquaculture sustainability and product nutritional quality and safety. Particularly in work package two, we developed a better understanding of the molecular mechanisms controlling nutrient utilization that help us to generate sustainable and functional diets and improve the efficiency of aquaculture in the future. Studies focused on protein lipid responses to dietary stimulations and information on the relationships between diet composition, protein, lipid metabolism, and nutrient utilization in the four tested fish species. When we talk for fish nutrition, we need to remember that we have the feed for producers, that they are interested in the formulation of the tailor-made species-specific diet, and they are interested in the availability of raw ingredients to include in the diet, a low cost of these ingredients, and also the environmentally friendly diets to be produced. Fish nutrition for farmers means the optimization of feeding to promote the, fed, the best fish growth and have fish feed efficiency. For the researchers, the evaluation of the long-term effects of novel diets to meet fish nutritional requirements and physiological functions and obtain the best fish growth health performance is what fish nutrition means. We mentioned before that the amount of each specific nutrient that fish needs to sustain all its physiological functions for growth, reproduction, while maintaining a healthy life, is its fish nutrient requirements. The requirement of one nutrient often depends on the quantity and interaction of another nutrient. We have the example of the histidine and lysine ratio as the two amino acids. The nutrient requirement depends on fish age, the body mass, the temperature rearing system, the species, and estimates of the nutrient requirements are independent on the amount of the other nutrient if the levels of that nutrient is not limiting. For example, minimize the impact of nutrient interactions and ensure that they are not limiting. So we have nutrient-based models for that. Values in nutrient requirement tables don't allow for processing or storage losses, which is something else also we have to take into account. In addition, the digestive system of fish is different, depends on their feeding habits, on the species, if it is carnivorous, if it is omnivorous, if it is a planktivore fish. We can see in this figure a longer gut for some fish species, different types of the shape of the stomach in the four fish species here. And all these are adaptations for fish to be able to digest their feed appropriately. This also also has shown that there are differences in the uptake of nutrients before and after feeding. And there are differences in amino acid uptake patterns between different ingredients in the fish diets. The fish liver also has a high capacity to compensate for some nutritional imbalances in order to optimize white muscle protein turnover and prioritize protein growth. We see that there are different diets that usually in the graph here on the left, on the right, sorry, that they can cause different amino acid uptake patterns and this could be close to the ideal profile of the fish species or not. So feeding management and also the diet in respect of the nutrients that it is 
included plays a very big role in the digestive physiology of the fish. In addition, the level of feeding, the feed quantity and quality, as we discussed, and the feeding strategy is critical for the energy intake and distribution among energy requiring processes in the fish. We are interested, interested from the ingested energy, how much is stored as growth, how much is lost to the environment, and how much fish needs satisfy its energy requirements for its standard routine and active metabolic rate. Nutrients that are retained after the energy expended for metabolism will affect the final fish fillet quality. So there's a feed conversion ratio, also an economic conversion ratio, and feed efficiency in feeding management, which is very important to respect per fish species, the fish energy budget. As an example, we can give this amino acid flux model. We can see that we have 0 0.22 amino acids that they are consumed with the feed that we offer, but only 0 0.20 amino acids are absorbed to the production because they, we have production of uh, feces and uneaten feed. So, we end with uh, less uh, amino acids inside the protein turnover circle, and protein synthesis is going to use 0 0.13 of them. While if it is very efficient and if the digestion process is good and the assimilation of nutrients of the amino acids works very well in the protein turnover, we will have a growth of 0 0.12 of that, that they are synthesized while we have a degradation of 0 0.01. So this is a very good model that presents that food consumption is important, absorption is important, digestion, and also what is retained as growth for the better fish quality and fish health. Let's go now to part two of the webinar and see some examples of innovative fish feeds for healthy fish for a healthy human consumption, as it was the aim of Future EU Aqua project. We select raw materials and there's an urgent need for find alternative sources for aqua feeds. The nutrient sources come from fishing and agriculture, as we said before, up to now. But it is well known that high quality fish meal provides all the nutrients that we discussed before. And also replacing fish meal and fish oil in high performing diets is not straightforward and easy. So how can we have efficient alternative feed ingredient sources? and how these ingredient sources can be sustainably produced with an ecological footprint. And also, are they able to be assimilated by the fish and find out that we have a very good quality of fillet at the end? An example of these new ingredient sources is microalgae, bacterial protein, yeast, insect meal, fermented soya bean meal. Insects and GMO-free vegetable proteins follow at second place, as we saw before, as we saw according to the research that Future EU Aqua conducted with the consumers. And fish trimmings and bacterial proteins are high on the scale midpoint. So, what happens if we use these new feed, new feeds, new nutrients that they are incorporated in the feeds, and we see how the performance of the fish is ongoing. For this reason, we had screened existing conventional and novel raw materials, ingredients. We developed tailor-made feed formulations, we designed them, and we aim to fulfill the needs for optimal fish performance 
health and welfare for both conventional and organic aquaculture. The optimal diets were evaluated in small lab scale systems and validated in large scale. The fish species that they were evaluated were sea bream, sea bass, trout, and salmon. And the fitting trials as at the small scale took place in research institutes and universities in Europe and at the large scale in fish farms in Greece, Denmark, and Norway. We use three sets of chemical analysis and one for each group of materials for all the different fish trials. For salmon and sea bream trials, we used as ingredients fish meal, tunicate meal, black soldier fry meal, algal meals, biomass and fish oil. For sea bass and sea bream trials, we used conventional fish meal, fish meal made from trimmings, krill meal, bacterial protein, yeast, algal meal, squid meal, pea protein, rapeseed oil and fish oil, corn gluten, wheat gluten, and soybean meal. We had the novel ingredients in lower values and in higher values, and we made different combination and mixes. And we evaluate them in the lab for growth performance. Research in the lab have shown that differences in liver proteome if we have insect meals in the diets in different three in different fish species, for example, sea bass, trout, and sea bream, affects the hepatic proteome and apoptosis. And the nebrio monitor as an insect and as an insect meal included in the diets in fish diets has a more observable effect on liver proteome, more on European sea bass and gilhead sea bream. So for gilhead sea bream, fewer protein spots were altered in comparison to European sea bass and rainbow proud. And this could, uh, 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 could end up to possible relationships to the animal's natural heat in and rich diet. So there's a need to strategically manage the fish meal replacement in fish diet per species for these new ingredients. Back to our results now from future UAQUA, we have a best growth and FCR for conventional and trimmings, fish trimmings mixture, but with moderate inclusion of these novel ingredients. We have negative effects of exclusive inclusion of novel ingredients, possibly to lower palatability and lower that stability. And uh, we also have composition when we use novel non-marine source ingredients. More fat was accumulated in both intestinal and liver tissues of conventional and trimix fat groups, possibly related to increased feed intake and final weight. The histopathological examination of the liver showed minimal steatosis lipid accumulation for fish trimmings mixture with moderate inclusion of novel ingredients. So the results of this study for CBAS indicated that novel ingredients at moderate inclusion level, either with conventional fish meal, fish oil, or Trimmings of fish milk, fish oil had positive effects on growth performance and feed conversion ratio. For organic aquaculture, we used a mixture of novel ingredients. So organic fish meal, bacterial protein, and yeast protein replacing fish meal in three experimental diets that they have different inclusion levels, 20%, 25%, and 30%. Although no significant differences were observed at the final weight of the groups, a trend with higher final weights was presented for groups fed with a diet that had 20% inclusion level and 25% compared to groups fed with a control diet. So the fit conversion ratio showed no significant differences between the control diet and the rest of the diets. 
So higher levels of fat were detected in whole body of fish when they fed the novel ingredients. Higher protein digestibility for experimental diet with compared to control. And a descending level of EPA and DHA in the whole body of fish with increased inclusion of novel ingredients. So there is an improvement of the FCR at moderate inclusion of novel ingredients. And also we have seen some higher levels of fat and protein digestibility. For Sebring now, again, we examined four experimental diets and the control diet was designed to simulate the composition of a commercial diet, incorporating organic fish meal trimix, organic fish oil and soya bean meal organic and concentrate. And we designed a low FIFO mixture, replacing fish meal, FIFO means fish in, fish out. So we are replacing fish meal at three different inclusion levels, 20, 25% and 30. And we have seen that this low FIFO mixture, which was organic processing fish streamings, bacterial protein and yeast protein, presented higher growth performance when it was used as a mixture for 25% replacement of fish meal diet compared to the control diet. Another experiment was to bring a novel ingredients. So that the total replacement of fish meal with algae meal insect meal and tunicate meal did not affect seabream growth performance compared with the 68% replacement of fish meal with insect meal and 45% replacement of fish meal with tunicate meal. The total replacement of fish meal with algae meal, which was feodactimul tricornutum and schizohytrium limacinium, and insect meal, black soldier fried, and tunicate meal, hyona intestinalis, and no fish oil didn't affect sea bream growth performance. However, sea bream showed better growth performance when they fed organic fish meal, krill, and algae, and so slow growth rates when they fed only tunicate meal. So we understand that we need a combination and a mixture of different ingredients, novel ingredients, in the right percentages to use them as alternatives for replacement of fish meal and fish oil. In relation to taste, and after taste, the fillets of sea bass, future Uaqua diets that we used was sweeter and less metallic. And Next slide, please. Overall, future Uaqua sea bass appearance and overall evaluation was very pleasant in comparison with the controlled sea bass. For some fish performance, we saw that we had high performance in particular in terms of FCR food conversion ratio and all the synergistic effects of innovative ingredients as fish oil and fish meal were replaced in some of diets. We had su superior digestibility and performance of, uh, of fish when they fed the organic fish meal and fish oil diet and lower digestibility of most essential amino acids when we have all innovative ingredients combined. Again, the results point out that the right combination of the novel ingredients is needed per species, fish species specific, and in relation to the life cycle and age of the fish species. However, when we used organic fish meal and fish oil, we had the best results in growth performance. Increased protein, EPA and DHA and zinc content in the fillet and altered skin mineral level and skin structure was uh, found when we fed someone with microalgae. 
decreased expression of stress-related genes and increased expression of lipid and steroid metabolism-related genes when we fed salmon of microalgae and insect meal combined. So results on the quality, and they are varied depending again on the formulation of the fish diet and the combination of the novel ingredients that we use. For trout, we tested ingredients for fermented rapeseed meal and fermented soya bean meal because soya bean meal is the first protein source in aquaculture feeds and exists in various qualities and may contain anti-nutritional factors. While we also uh, realize that fermentation may deactivate these anti-nutritional factors and reduce undesirable substances. For organic trout farming, since the rule for organic regulation does not allow synthetic amino acid to balance diets, we have only a few protein alternatives to use to fish meal. And it is traditional that fish meal or fish trimming, fish trimmings have an environmental drawback with a high phosphorus content. The Future Aqua project developed a new technology where the low phosphorus content and high protein content was uh, processed. And this allowed high protein and high energy in uh, organic which is something unique. Growth results from the trout experiments showed a relatively high feed conversion ratio and a lower growth than with normal commercial diets when we had this size of fish. And use of 50% of rapeseed meal had a negative effect on growth and possible further negative effect on when on uh, uh, fermented rapeseed ra 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 meal because this growth data were significantly lower as compared with the corresponding soya bean meal or fermented soya bean meal diets. Results indicate that we need to optimize and further de develop this fermentation yeah, process. And also we need to continue checking how we can follow and pick up nutrients from processed waste trimmings. Microorganisms, mostly bacteria, live in close association with practically every animal on, on Earth. These major roles lay in the nutrition of the animal, host through various protection of the host against other pathogenic microorganisms. And these bacterial communities tend to be rather diverse. And along with the functional redundancy of different bacterial species, the identification of the exact role of these bacterial communities remains a challenging task. So what can we do with diet and how can we associate nutrition and diet and bacterial communities in the gut of the fish? Is there any association? We have seen that there is an association, especially three hours after feeding with a particular diet. And this continues for research for the next slide too to find out and try to understand the functionality of this microbiota structure depending on the diets that we offer. So when we use dietary insect meals, what kind of bacteria we are having and why they're changing in microbial communities and functionality, which in a way is related to pathways to metabolism. In other words, different insects as fish feed ingredients, do they respond differently? And is this species specific differential responses of this structural and functional dynamics in gut microbial communities? 
how much of these gut microbial communities could help for the pathways related to metabolism in fish. So we have a better assimilation of the nutrients when we offer them in the diet. Next slide. Okay, thank you. If we see what's happening in nature, we can observe that there is a decreasing number of intestinal tract bacterial species from white fish to conventional fish. Although the about of dominance and real residents that they already exist in the gut and they could serve as symbiotes of the animals, we really need to see this ecophysiological role of this bacteria. How they contribute to nutritional differences between the wild population, the organically produced population, and the conventional farms. And all of this is connected through the different diets that they have and they consume. So gut microbial diversity could be influenced by nutrition or environmental factors. Few studies on fish and crustaceans are available that experimentally confirm this, but Future Uaqua is trying to answer to these questions by explaining and by analyzing diet as a major factor driving the composition and metabolism of the gut microbiota. While gut microbiota is actively involved in nutrient assimilation and immunity and the health of the host organisms. So which are these gut bacteria that serve of essential nutrients to fish? We don't depend only on the diet to provide the essential nutrients to fish. Could we change or use gut bacterial communities that could also help in the metabolic pathways and provide essential nutrients to fish? Do these gut bacterial communities have temporal shifts or temporal variations because of the food supply and the nutrients or permanent? Next slide, please. Diet is a major factor driving the composition and metabolism of the gut microbiota. Gut microbiota is actively involved in nutrient assimilation and immunity. And future Uaqua Seabree My Bioma found that compared to a control feed, when we use tunicate and insect meal, didn't alter the dominant meat gut bacteria. And only 6.6% of the cell OTUs, although it's low, uh, it shows that there is a distinct microbiota for each diet that we use. Another result is that when we use the tunicate diet, we have the most distinct microbiota and also the highest unique bacterial communities for this diet. Also, the theory treatment, when we use and fed sea breams with different algae, we saw suggesting their distinct microbiota again. And also we saw that uh, algae and uh, some bacteria, same, some algae say, shared similar number of oil to use with the control diet. So there are, bacterial communities that they have temporal shifts most relating to temporal variations in food supply. And we can manipulate them by changing the gut bacterial communities that could serve as providers of essential nutrients of fish. We analyzed the same also for salmon and we found and we are comparing the different bacterial taxa with beneficial metabolic services between the two fish species. And the analysis is ongoing. 
also metabolomics has shown that is a, is a field of research that investigates the complex and diverse metabolic processes. And the goal of metabolome analysis is to identify and quantify all metabolites in a, cell in a cellular system. And future Yoakwa metabolome analysis showed and highlighted the three different groups that we have. And when Seabream is fed this future EU aqua organic tire marked in blue, or the future EU aqua conventional diet marked in green, in comparison with the commercial organic diet marked in brown and commercial conventional diet marked in orange, we found that this indicates and the analysis showed that there is no difference between the two commercial diets. Indeed, commercial and futuristic diets modify the fish metabolome differently. So moreover, the choice between future organic and future commercial diet induces different modifications in the metabolic pattern in the fish. I would like to stop now and thank all the researchers that contribute for the future EU Aqua Nutrition work all these years with a lot of analysis and in different areas for providing nice results and research on novel feed ingredients and how they can be used to assimilate better the nutrients for fish farming. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Elena. Uh, very interesting and very good uh, uh, findings. Uh, let me see if there are questions on the, on the chat. Uh, if you have any question, please, you can raise your hand or uh, you can uh, write in the chat. Okay, I see already from Sophia. Uh, so please, Sophia, can you? Oh, sorry, I just clapped for Elena for the great presentation. Ah, okay, good. <laughs> thank, uh, you, <laughs> thank you, Sophia. And uh, uh, so there is a question, a general question. Uh, I don't know, uh, Elena, if you know the answer, but if uh, for a fish nutritional value, is it is better sea bass or sea beam? I don't know if you have, it's not connected to the presentation, but perhaps you know the answer. Yeah, it is a different fish species and they have different nutritional value, but uh, uh, you have to check uh, the omega-3 fatty acids basically just to see which one has more or less. I cannot separate them. So I think uh, it's uh, something that uh, someone has to look for it. And uh, also depends on the taste. So it's not only the nutritional value, but the taste also sometimes that uh, uh, controls our consumption. Okay, thanks. There is also a, a question from Mustafa. Uh, do you support that the advantage of aquaculture fish is characterized by the stability of their content of omega-3 provided by the aquaculture feed? On the other hand, this content varies during the seasons of the year for the fish of, of fisheries. So, If I understood the yeah. question, uh, there is advantage in aquaculture because, as we said, we can offer them the best feed uh, formulation according to their size and to the species. So it's a species specific and size specific feed formulation that we offer. And this is the advantage in comparison to the wild feeds where they have to find the uh, feed uh, when it's available and is not uh, yeah. all the time the same. So they might have some periods of starvation too. And that obviously changes the content of omega-3 
fatty acids in their flesh and in their fillet. So yes, there is a, an advantage when we use aquaculture uh, farmed fish because we have, uh, how we call it, we, we control the performance and the growth of the fish. But first, of course, we have to know the physiology of the fish and we have to, to know how it behaves in different environments and how it could assimilate all these nutrients that we offer. Okay, thank you. And uh, perhaps I have also uh, a question. So with the, how these new findings can go directly to practice? I mean, do you see any obstacle uh, either in the market or uh, as regulatory obstacles for putting these new findings in, the, uh, in reality on the practice for farmers? Uh, well, research so far, as I presented in one of the slides, in relation to the consumers, um, has shown that there are some um, reservations for some ingredients that we are trying to use as alternative new ingredients. And uh, this is uh, very wise because still we have to continue the research and uh, analyze more our data on these uh, new uh, ingredients uh, for long-term effects. Uh, in uh, relation to farmers, again, uh, we have to, they have to follow the demand uh, from the consumers. So uh, they have to adjust and uh, if they have to apply these new feed ingredients, they have to be uh, completely sure that, uh, as I said before, the long-term effects uh, and the results are already valid. In relation to the regulation, again, it has to be continuously adapted and revised uh, according to the new research findings. But overall, I have to say that uh, when we use uh, ingredients that they are close to the nature of the fish feed habits, the results are uh, more uh, applicable than when we use ingredients that they are a little bit uh, uh, far from the nature of the fish feeding habits. So we take, we need more time and longer time to find the right combinations of these results. Okay, thank you very much. I do not see other questions. If you have, please either raise your hands or uh, just put your question on the chat box. In the meantime, I would like to invite you also to uh, take a minute to, to give us a feedback on this uh, online uh, seminar. And uh, for the rest, uh, Elena, do you have anything to add or? No, thank you very much, Emmanuel. I think it was uh, nice to present all these uh, exciting results, very different results and many results. <laughs> And uh, it was good that the future Yuaqua gave us the opportunity to do all this uh, research. And we would like to continue it further, obviously. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Elena, for taking the time to also uh, inform us about all these uh, findings. Um, this was the second session, as I said, we will have other four sessions. Uh, the 3rd of March, we will have also a session on consumer and regulatory activities from 12 uh, to 13. So you can use the same uh, link that you have. Uh, and uh, uh, yes, you will find all the presentations and also all the recording of the, these seminars uh, um, on the website of uh, Future U Aqua. Uh, you can see here uh, and uh, and yes i don't see any other questions so i uh, thanks everyone for the attendance i thanks again elena for the presentation uh, and uh, I, I see you at next session uh, have a, a very nice uh, afternoon thank you very much thank you bye Oh, we are alone. <laughs> <laughs>